Hey, what's going on everyone? This video, I just wanted to take a couple moments to go over something called string escape sequences. We've talked about them a little bit throughout the series so far, but now I want to have a video dedicated to them just so you really understand what they are and what they're for. Now, I would like you guys to check out the sponsor, Monday.com. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. Monday.com is a project management solution that'll give you the tools needed to get work done. Basically, they have a really beautiful user interface to keep track of tasks where they stand, what needs to get done, what's being blocked, and so forth. It's completely customizable with different column types. And overall, it's just a really beautiful interface that works on mobile. So you can get it on mobile and keep track of where you are on the go. Highly recommended guys, check it out, you won't be disappointed. Now let's talk a little bit about string escape sequences. So an escape sequence is when we put a backslash and that says, hey, what comes next needs to be interpreted different than usual. And in this case, we're getting an error because backslash H doesn't mean anything. But there is a series of sequences that do mean things, and I'm gonna show them to you right here. So the ones we've talked about, we talked about a backslash N, I think we talked about a backslash T, but there are a couple of others in here. Hmm, I don't even know what a backslash A is. I kinda wanna try it. Let's put a backslash A. Now let's give this a run. Yeah, that's what I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. I don't know if you guys heard that, but when you run this, you get a little beep. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Wow, we could have some fun with this. <laughs> All right, let's run this one. <laughs> what, it only did like four. Probably just got tired of beeping at us, so it stopped. <laughs> so there's some more examples in here besides just the alert. So we have ones for single quotes and double quotes. Why is that important exactly? Because if we were wanting to put a double quote in here, like let's say we wanted to quote my name. Well, when we put a double quote here, it assumes we're trying to end the string and everything after it is just garbage. So if we wanna put that in there, then we need to prefix this with a backslash. And then we can do the same thing at the end here, like so. Now, Caleb should be in quotes. And there you go. So there's also an escape sequence for a single character, but it's important to know that you don't actually need to use an escape sequence for a single character inside of a string. So for example, I could put single quotes around something and it should work just fine. You can see that it still prints those single quotes and we didn't have to do anything special. The purpose of the single quote is actually for characters. So if we go down here and we create a character, let's just call it letter, and we want to store a single quote. Well, it's not gonna work because if inside of these single quotes, I put the single quote character, well, it just gives us an error because it thinks we're ending the, the, the character. So what we need to do is we need to put a backslash before it. So it looks a little unbalanced, but it'll do. So as a general rule, single quotes can go inside of double quotes fine, and double quotes can go inside of single quotes just fine. So I can put a double quote in here without any issue, but you can't put a double quote inside of a double quote without escaping it, and you can't put a single quote inside of a single quote without escaping it. Another one in here is the backslash, and this one's actually pretty important because if you put a backslash in a string, it's going to assume that the next character needs to be interpreted differently. Remember, that's how escape sequences work. So if we actually want to print a backslash, we need to use two backslashes. So in this scenario, it should just have one backslash is when it prints. .NET run, and you can see it says backslash is. So that is how you do the backslash character. Now the form feed, new line, and carriage return, these are all variations of going to the new line. <laughs> you can research the differences between those if you want. I always use the new line character and I'm pretty sure that's what most people use. Now there is something that might be of interest to you which is known as verbatim string literals. So verbatim means as is, you can find this here and you can see you prefix your string with an at sign. So if we go back to our code and we prefix this with an at sign, this is going to change the way things work. So let's first get rid of all the quotes and the backslash and the single quotes. Let's get back to how we were. So the first thing is that we can put a backslash without having to do two backslashes. And when we do something like backslash T for a tab, it's not going to render the tab, it's just going to print backslash T. So if we run this, you can see that the entire thing is printed as is. The only exception here is when it comes to double quotes, because if I go in here and I put a double quote, it still assumes it's the end of the string. So to do that, you actually put two double quotes. So if we wanted to quote Caleb, you just need to put two double quotes around the name. And then when we run it, it just prints one. So that is verbatim strings and how to use them. Hopefully that was a good introduction to escape sequences and hopefully you'll run into this in your coding career and you'll be like, wow, I'm super thankful Caleb taught me how to do this. Now I'm a pro and you'll be happy. <laughs> 
Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna start talking about something new. So, see you then.